On this Church Mag Spotlight, we are talking with Church Marketing Sucks editor, Kevin Hendricks. Kevin, welcome to the Church Mag Spotlight. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Awesome. Tell us a little bit about who Kevin Hendricks is. Uh, I'm the editor of Church Marketing Sucks. I uh, run my own freelance writing and editing company called Monkey Out of Nowhere. Uh, and I'm a kind of worked at home dad. Um, watch the kids during the day and uh, try and get work done at the same time. I don't <laughs> quite know how that works. Uh, and I like to read a lot. So the the name of your your editing and writing company monkey out of nowhere and it's we're not just saying it fun monkey out of nowhere that's actually how you have it spelled monkey out of nowhere where does that name come from tell us about that uh the tick do you remember the tick yes (laughs) Yes. okay say say no more well don't say i mean you could say more i just i have explained it's uh it's an old uh kind of comic hero uh spoof (laughs) Uh, started as a comic book by uh, Ben Edlund uh, and turned into a, uh, a a Fox Saturday morning cartoon, um, which was kind of a ridiculous way to do it, but it was awesome and hilarious and um, just the best show ever. Uh, and there's a there's an episode of the show where where the Tick lives with his sidekick Arthur. Uh, they share an apartment, uh, and they had spent the morning cleaning their apartment and getting it all all spick and span. Arthur's kind of an uptight little fellow. Um, and they get the apartment all clean, and then this monkey uh, appears from the distant past with a time machine uh, and just appears magically in their living room and starts running around and ruining everything. And and the tick exclaims, Arthur! Monkey out of nowhere! There you go. And there it is. Monkey <laughs> out of nowhere. All right. Kevin, let me, as editor of Church Marketing Sucks and having a passion for church marketing and communication, I mean, you've been there since the beginning of Church Marketing Sucks. You are now the editor of this this great contributor to good church communication. Uh, l- let me pick your brain a little bit and ask what you think the biggest lessons churches need to learn when it comes to church marketing and communication. What is the biggest lesson that churches need to learn? Um, this, this is going to sound kind of weak, um, but I think the biggest thing is they just need to do it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) There's a lot of churches out there, um, especially these days, we get so many mega churches and so many big churches that have money and have budgets and they have communication directors. Right. Um, and and that's awesome. And they're, they're diving in and they're doing stuff and they're, um, you know they're sharing their stories, and they're they're um, we're learning a lot of great stuff from uh, you know directors of communications at these churches that can afford to do it. And you know, yes, that's awesome. Um, but those are the that's the minority. There are so many churches out there. Um, you know the the churches that are under three hundred people. Um, they don't have a communications director. Um, you know they're lucky if they have a you know an administrative assistant who knows much about communication. Um, you know, a lot of these churches are just small and they're not focused on, um, communication and marketing. Um, it's, it's not something that they, they put a lot of effort into. It's kind of an afterthought maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe the pastor got into a blog or got on a Twitter and they do a little bit. Um, but for so many of them, it's, it's just not on their radar. Um, and it's, it's not something they can throw money at. You kind of have maybe a few volunteers trying to do it. Maybe the, Maybe the administrative assistant tries to keep Facebook updated on the side, um, you know, when she's not doing the bulletin or, you know, when he's not busy with other stuff. Um, so I think just so many churches need to need to realize the importance of it um, and realize that they're already doing it, whether they, you know, have money for it or not. They're communicating. Um, they just might be doing it really poorly. Right. Um, That's the title. And, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and they, they kind of need to understand that and, and put some effort into it and find a way, um, you know, whether it's a volunteer or whether it's, um, you know, getting some hours from that admin assistant uh, to be able to do some things um, and start putting some focus into their communication, start getting some strategy, um, start thinking about how they do it uh, and, and try to find ways to, to start doing it better. 
because this is the greatest story ever told. This is the gospel. Uh, and we want people to come to our churches and hear that. Um, but if we're not telling anybody, if we're not bringing them in, um, then we're, we're not, we're not doing the great commission. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Now you've seen a lot of sucky church marketing, Kevin, what is the suckiest church marketing you have ever heard of or seen? <laughs> You know, despite our title, I don't like to go there. <laughs> well, then what's the coolest? Tell us what's the what, what do you, what's one of the coolest off the top of your head that you've seen? Something that we can we can kind of run with, with for a bit of inspiration today. Um, and here's the this is kind of the tricky thing because there's so much that's just um, cool or slick uh, or it's. Right, you know, it's, it's got fancy video. Yeah, and, and that's awesome what always seems up. to be the aim, but that's not actually the point of communication. Communication no. isn't isn't so much the 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 car; it's what's getting out of the car. You know, from point A to point B, from the communicator to the receiver. It's it's the message. It isn't necessarily yeah, so, the paint job. Yeah. Yeah. So when we talk about you know the worst church marketing ever or the best church marketing ever. Um, those are kind of difficult mm-hmm. categories. And, and you know, we don't, on church marketing sucks, we don't sit up there and pull up all these examples of awful church marketing no. for people. You know, that's not, no, uh-uh. that's not what we do. So when, uh, when I think of the, you know, the best communication I've seen, um, it's usually stuff that really connects with people and that doesn't require, you know, loads of money and, uh, and, and all kinds of fancy stuff. It's usually simple things, um, you know, simple stories, simple testimonies. You know, the age-old testimony where people got up in church and, and told their story, um, that's really powerful communication. Um, you know, you take somebody's testimony that they, you know, you know, the old days we stood up in church and stood up our pew and told our little story. Um, capture that story. Tell that story and, you know, write it up in, you know, a few paragraphs or, or, or get a video on that person. Uh, and, you know, even if it's just your phone and you're holding it up and, and doing a quick one-minute video, um, those stories are just incredible. Um, I mean, that's the explosion of, of social media right now is people sharing their stories on Facebook uh, or Twitter or whatever. Um, and I think if the church can, can harness those stories and start sharing them, um, that, that's just incredible communication. And when I see churches doing that, um, it's just so engaging and so inviting. Um, you know, whether it's, um, you know, I, did, I did some work for uh, Kelvin Coe's church uh, where they redid their whole website and they put, they wanted to have stories on almost every page of the website or every section, hmm. um, you know, where it's, you know, here's the youth group and here's a story of a, of a teenager and, and who they are and, you know, what their story is. And here's a, you know, they do, you know, like they had some, some adoption ministries and stuff where they would help out um, adoptive or foster parents. Uh, so they had, you know, a story there from somebody who had, who had been in foster care and been through the program and then kind of helped out with this, you know, he, he was in his 20s or something now and, and now came back as a volunteer to help out with this program uh, where they basically gave foster parents like a night off and, you know, threw some big great thing for their kids. And um, so it was this cool program and this kid had been involved in it, you know, grew up that way and now he's helping to lead it. So it's just this cool story. That's awesome. Um, and, and putting that in there, put, you know, it it was so much better than than any copy we could write about about whatever this ministry is and what, you know, what things the ministry did. It was, you know, this kid who grew up and came back and and took part in it. Um, So those, those stories I think are so, are so great. And you don't have to be a mega church to tell those stories. You can have, you don't have to have big money to tell those stories or a slick site or whatever. Um, That's kind of where I see church communication at its, at its absolute best. Absolutely. I, I, I totally agree, Kevin. You know, we're always worrying about, you know, HTML5, HTML5, is the website responsive? You know, are we recording in HD? Are we doing a live stream of the service? You know, these are the questions. And mind you, they're, they're good questions to be asked. And I'm all for good, creative, well done, uh, you know, well packaged productions. I'm all for that. I think that that is top notch and important. But like you said, we can't lose focus. And we have to, you know, story first and then and then deal with these other things later. And that really is the success of it all. Because if you look at what's viral and what's popular, it's the it's the flip phone awkward dimension. You know, not this way, iPhone shot, but this way, you know, where it's all up and down and the sides are cut off. 
<laughs> those can be great. That man. geek rant, but still, those are the ones that go that go viral. You know, not the the, the well produced thing um, necessarily. Uh, so you're you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right, and definitely something for those that that really work on that on trying to to create a polished product to keep that in mind. That wait a minute, stop. It's the message that's most important. Yeah, now, and I think that's that's good news for small churches. You absolutely. Know, you know, I think that's really. I mean, my church is a smaller church, and we don't have a big budget. We I'm the volunteer communications committee. <laughs> now, see, that's awesome, Kevin. I mean, you know, there's no visions of grandeur here. You're not like, you know, hey, I am the expert in this. Everyone step aside. No, you are, you're in the trenches with the rest of us. All right. And that's, and that's the kind of stuff that, you know, I try to do is try to find, you know, small, short things where we can tell our stories because that's, that's where we can do it well. And, you know, we're not going to compete. On, on slick production values, but we have cool stories that we can share. And that's, you know, that's kind of what, what we can make work and, and where we can find success. Kevin, so. you are an inspiration to us all. Churches big and small, budgets big and small, those with technical skills, those without, those that are creative, those that are not. We all can do it. Start with the story and go from there. Uh, one final question that you can kind of depart with, and that is if if there was one book that someone should read that would really sharpen their church communication and marketing skills what what would it be and you know we just got done recording the five questions for the church mag podcast and you're a man that's read almost 250 books in two years so as much as this would be a profound and amazing answer, I can't help but wonder if this is just throwing you into a tailspin because you've consumed so many great books <laughs> in a short amount of time. So maybe this isn't a good question after all. I don't know. It's a horrible question. Hindsight's twenty twenty. <laughs> um. Yeah, that is a tough question. Um, or maybe just a few, a roundup, if you will. Whatever works, for, whatever makes you comfortable, Kevin. Yeah, uh, it's tough. Um, I I think there's there's a lot of church communication books, or there there's there's more and more. I shouldn't say there's a lot, um, but there's more and more these days, and I think there's a lot of good stuff out there um, that can really help you out. Um, Meredith Gould has written some great stuff. Um, she's got a new one that came out this summer, uh, the Social Media Gospel, I believe, is the title. Um, that one's just got some great practical stuff on social media. Um, can really help you dig into that. Um, she's got an uh, an older one. Um, I'm trying to see if I have it right there. Um, that would be epic if it was right uh, there. It's <laughs> right here. See this one I'm talking about. This is uh, how we roll. I mean, we don't just <laughs> awesome. I do. I, I not only read a lot. I have a lot of books. Um, so the word made fresh. This is probably from 2008. Um, so it's a little bit older, um, uh, but it's just got some really good practical strategy, uh, philosophy type stuff, um, that's helpful to get your head around. Um, I'm trying to think if there's other big ones. Um, Ken Meyer has another one, um, uh, less clutter, less noise that just everybody talks about, uh, as a good strategy book. Um, and I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about our own books, um, CFCC has outspoken uh, is kind of our big um, <laughs> uh, that's our big one uh, that, that we came out a couple of years ago with uh, just a whole bunch of, of folks uh, contributing great ideas. Uh, we released Dangerous earlier this year, uh, which has it's kind of a, a beginner's guide. Um, the creative missions folks uh, all wrote about it. Um, or all contributed to it, um, so that's kind of a, a good quick start. Yeah, that's um, what the one thing I really like about the the church marketing sucks books that you guys that you guys put out, or or from the labs rather, is that it, it's a combination of authors. So you're not just getting one perspective per se, but you're 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 looking at something from so many different dimensions. It's it's really nice what you guys are doing. Yeah, we put it. We it, it, it's easier to do it that way too. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> or, or, right. Um, and then we just last week we just released uh, Church Communication Heroes Volume One, um, which I'm really excited about. Um, just trying to tap into the the heroes of communication. Um, yes, we can have heroes of communication. Um, they didn't have Facebook, you know, right. hundreds of years ago, but they still communicated. Um, so that one kind of taps into some of the inspiration out there. And and the good news with that one. 
Kevin, is that it's it's volume one, which naturally there's going to be more because it's a volume. Exactly. <laughs> So, the, so let, let me, I, I know I said that that was the last question, but I just have to know because let me, let me, let me continue with the books. Cause you, oh, you I'm asked sorry. me about books. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm talking about books. So those are all good practical communication stuff. Okay. Um, but I would also recommend getting into some, um, some memoirs, uh, of people who have, and, and their faith experience and kind of their, and especially when they talk about dealing with church. Uh, I think there's a lot of good books out there that can give you that kind of um, how people deal with church perspective, um, which I think is really helpful when you talk about how to communicate to them. Uh, and there's all kinds of books in this genre. Um, Anne Lamott is, she's a great writer. She's really um, neurotic and kind of messed up. She was into, you know, alcohol and drugs and just had a, you know, really hit rock bottom um, but came back and found Jesus and found a church um, and still has a lot of that neurotic stuff in her. So some of her books, um, Traveling Mercies is probably the best one where she talks about faith. Um, just a really good book to get your head around um, uh, people who might be visiting your church and not necessarily churchy Christian-y people, but people who actually, you know, screw up and live normal lives. Um, that's a great one. Um, Addie Zierman uh, just came out with... Um, uh, when We Were on Fire, which is her her memoir of growing up uh, kind of in the church uh, and then kind of getting disillusioned with it and dealing with depression um, and some alcoholism there. Um, and she talks a lot about kind of going to church and trying to find a church. Um, I think there's some great stuff there. Um, so, so those are just a couple, but there's a lot of great uh, kind of memoirs out there that can kind of give you that that perspective of, of what's it like for somebody who's searching for the faith or, or searching for a church or a place to belong. Um, and I, I mean, it, it's, it's big picture stuff. It's, it's not practical at all. Right. <laughs> uh, but it'll, it'll really help uh, give you that kind of perspective and kind of get out of your own shoes and see things from somebody else. And I think that's just uh, so valuable when it comes to trying to communicate and try to connect with people. Yes. So, okay. I'll stop talking about books now. No, it's okay. It's okay. I just, I, I, that, I said that was kind of the last question, and here I'm cooking up new ones. So it's really my fault. Uh, what I want to know is if you read many ebooks, or if, if you do all paper or a mix. I do both. You do both. Um, I, I, I have resisted uh, the, the ebook thing for a while. Um, and I, I think for most of, of uh, my 137 books, uh, when, I, when I read that many books last year, uh, and I wrote a book about it. Um, most of that book, I don't think I talk a ton about the eBooks. I kind of mention it a little bit, um, but this year especially, I've gotten into kind of using my iPhone to read more. And I thought I would hate that, mm-hmm. um, but, you know, because the screen's so small and you're going to sit there and. and right. But I, it's actually great. It, it's it's the right size and it works well. Um, and then you're you're. I always say you should take a book with you everywhere you go, so you know you're always you always have it. So I'm, everywhere I go, I'm you know carrying a book. Um, but if I'm reading a book on my phone, it's always there, and I can't forget it. You know, no right. matter where I am. Um, so it makes it really easy to read wherever you go, um, and be you know be able to read a couple pages at a time. You know, when you're waiting at the post office or whatever, um, which is how I get so many books read that I, right. I read all the time. So I I I do enjoy kind of the um, the ebook, uh, the ebook thing. It's I, I go back and forth just because you know I'm not I don't have a huge budget, so I'm always at the library and it's kind of whatever they have. Um, right. Sometimes they have the ebooks I can check out, and sometimes they don't. And, um, so I, I do go back and forth, but I've I really enjoyed kind of uh, getting into that, and I didn't I thought I would hate it, but it's actually a pretty great way to read. Um, so if pretty- if anyone has any. Any Kevin Hendricks Hendrix sightings, public sightings, and they see you with your phone, you're not playing Angry Birds. You are indeed reading a book. I don't play Angry Birds. I'm no, because probably- you're reading. You don't read <laughs> that many books, okay, and play Angry Birds. I'm saying, hey, Kevin, thank you so much for being on the Church Mag Spotlight. It's been a delight to get to know it's you fun. a little bit more. Thanks a lot, Eric. It's been a lot of fun on here.